Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Yesterday I did a video discussing the new features of the latest version of Lightroom Classic CC. That's version 8.0. One of those new features is you're able to create an HDR panorama all in one step. I mentioned in that video that I really didn't have any images that would allow me to properly demo that new feature. Well, I was able to get out early this afternoon and I took a set of bracketed images that we could produce a panorama with. So I'm going to show you in this video how it's done. Also, you're welcome to have these images to practice on your own. There'll be a link in the description below this video. Just click on that. You'll be brought to my website and you could download the images. Now, I did a panorama of this building, this lovely building, which is about five minutes away from my home. And what I did was I started out at the far left and I shot one image that was one stop underexposed. Then I shot this image that was supposedly perfectly exposed and this image that was one stop overexposed. Technically, we probably don't really need these overexposed images to do this panorama or the HDR sec part of the panorama, but I'm going to leave them in there so you could see basically how long this is going to take when you're using nine images. So this was the far left shot. This was the middle shot. That's one stop underexposed. That's perfectly exposed. And that's one stop over. And then I went to the right and that's one stop under perfectly exposed and one stop overexposed. And I didn't do any processing at all on these images except lens corrections. That's all that was done. Otherwise, the images are pretty much just straight raw files. So to use this new feature, what we need to do is select all the images that we want to create this HDR panorama with. So I'm clicked on the first one. I'll just hold the shift key down and click on the last one and they're all selected. Now there's a number of different ways you could get them into this function. You could just right click on the film strip and go down to photo merge and you could see HDR panorama is right there. You could do the same thing by just right clicking on the image that's being shown up here, photo merge HDR panorama, or you could go up into the photo menu photo merge and there it is HDR panorama so we'll just grab it from there now how long it takes of course depends on how powerful your computer is my computer's a little old now um let's take a look at it while it's doing this this is a uh 27 inch iMac uh late 2013 model so it's about going on five years old it's a 3.2 gigahertz Intel Core i5 processor with 32 gigabytes of RAM. Um, so at the time, it was probably near the top of the line 27-inch iMac. But now, of course, it's not. So um, you'll see that I found to get this preview, it took just under a minute when I did this kind of test earlier uh, when I got home from doing this. So we'll just have to wait until it's done. And once it's done, we'll get the preview here. But there's something very important. There's some limitations of this. If you look right here, it says HDR brackets merged with align images on and deghost off. To merge with different settings, you're going to have to do it the old way. You're going to have to merge the HDR brackets individually and then merge the resultant DNGs into a panorama. So basically, you're going to have to do the old two-step method, which takes a lot longer. So again, it's automatically going to um, align the images and it's going to have de-ghost off. Now, this happened to be a very windy day today. And I was on a tripod, but it was very windy. It's, I'd say the gusts were over 40 miles an hour. My tripod's pretty good, but it still probably was a little wobbly. Now, here's our preview. Uh, this is the cylindrical view. 
we could look at the spherical view and it will take a second to build that preview and you can see that's almost identical the perspective view usually on a panorama like this oh that's not too bad but let's just stay with the cylindrical now we have some choices here we could auto crop it if i don't you could see we'll have those blank pixels around the edge so i'm going to leave it auto cropped or and you could have it do auto settings so that under basic if you clicked the auto button that's what that is and there is without auto settings i personally like to process it myself so i'm going to leave that auto settings checkbox not checked you could create a stack so it's going to stack all nine of these images and include your hdr panorama image in in that stack i don't really use stack so i'm not going to check that box uh, we could use the boundary row uh, warp also i cover this in by the way in my um, mastering lightroom classic cc video series the boundary warp is available in the regular panorama functionality of the program but with boundary rope it, it will kind of interpolate and fill in uh, any pixels to try to make the image uh, i guess a little more have a little more height to it so let's do that we'll leave that and i'm not going to end up auto cropping we're not going to use auto settings and we're going to click merge now it i found that it will do this part of merging faster than it did the preview so where the preview took almost a minute this takes a little bit less than that and you'll see that we have the progress bar in the top left hand corner once it does it whether you're in a folder or a collection i happen to be in a collection it's just going to add that image to the folder and or the collection and it will end up over here on the far right of the film strip now i didn't um try it with that boundary uh warp function before so maybe it takes a little longer for that and what i'm going to do so you don't have to watch this because this is probably very boring is i'll pause the video and i'll come back in when it's done and i'll let you know how long it took okay we're back it took about 22 more seconds after i paused the video for it to finish and as i mentioned it's now right here at the end on the film strip and if i click on it there is our hdr panorama now i mentioned that i don't like to use any of the um, auto settings so everything is right in the middle so i could come in here and process this the way i want and just for the sake of argument i'm going to just go through and quickly process it to my liking and actually i i'm doing this on purpose because i'd like to show you one more feature or new feature of this latest version of Lightroom, this being Lightroom uh, Classic CC version 8.0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it up. Okay, so I think that's processed all right. But what I want to do is the white balance is a little too cool for me in the sky. I don't mind it in the grass and the trees and the water. I think it's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a graduated filter and I, right now it has exposure down. I'm going to leave it there. And I'm just going to add a graduated filter right about here. I'm going to hold the shift key in so I'm making it nice and straight. Now I'm going to reset exposure so it's not bringing exposure down. But I am going to uh, warm up the sky a little bit with the temperature slider and the tint slider. And then maybe I will add some contrast and some clarity to that sky and maybe i'll bring highlights down a little bit too i might even bring shadows down a little more there all right let's for the sake of let's add a little dehaze okay all right that's a little bit over the top but that's okay the other thing i wanted to show you is in yesterday's video i demonstrated the depth match and the depth match only works with iphone images but they did do some enhancement in version 8.0 of Lightroom Classic CC to the luminance mask. And when I add that, you'll notice it now has an eyedropper. And with the eyedropper, when you click on it, you, your cursor will turn into the eyedropper. And you could pick or click on a part of your image. And whatever 
brightness level you're clicking on, that is where this local adjustment, the graduated filter, will be added. Now this eyedropper for the luminance range mask is also available in the radial filter and the brush. Now I want it to just go on the brighter parts of the image. So I'm going to click right there and see what happens. And that's okay. Let's click there and I could resample. So that looks pretty good. There is before and there is after. So you could see how this new eyedropper in the luminance range mask comes in handy. Now I kind of uh, just put this graduated filter adjustment on the brighter pixels in the sky. And that's really what I wanted to do. So that's it for this video. I wanted to show you how to use this new HDR panorama merge feature that is in this, the latest version of Lightroom Classic CC version 8.0. And as a bonus, I showed you how to use that new luminance masking feature uh, with the eyedropper tool. Again, you're welcome to have the images. There'll be a link below this video in the description of this video. Uh, click on that. You'll be brought to my website and you could download the images from there. Thank you everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.